it's time for the final part of our Superphone challenge. Remember, we were sent to Barcelona to see whether my Nokia N95 was best... ..or my Apple iPhone was best. Our final test began slap bang in the centre of Barcelona. Susan, Jason, you've now reached the final stage of your challenge. This would be a race across the city, designed to test our phone's ability to connect to the internet as well as their navigation functions. Our first clue told us to find Gaudi's unfinished masterpiece. We'd need to find that by searching the web, and then we'd use our phones to navigate our way there. Where are you going? I'm just going to follow her. I think it's probably better that I use the, the mobile data connectivity of the iPhone, uh, which famously is something called Edge. Edge is an American mobile internet connection available across Europe, but its connection speed is a lot slower than the near broadband speeds of 3G that my N95 uses to log on. What the iPhone does have in its favour, though, is Safari, Apple's internet browser. It's a joy to use, especially when you flip the phone into landscape mode. With my quick 3G signal, I found Gaudi's masterpiece on Google in under 30 seconds. La Sagrada Familia. I had a slightly longer wait with Edge, but got there eventually. Sagrada Familia. There you go. I think in the, you know, in the mapping stakes, it, it just wasn't working well. But, you know, on the whole, I think it's a, it's a nice little package. It's got some good applications that I think I'd use, and it is lovely. And flicking around the interfaces is really rewarding, you know? So if you, if you like something that's cool and super stylish... Yes. ..then the iPhone... Welcome back. Now, we want to talk to you about one of the most eagerly anticipated new gadgets of the year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh -huh. the new 3G iPhone. Look at that. Five to eight in the morning, five minutes to go to the launch of the iPhone 3G. And because I'm first in, I might just get one. <sighs> oh, can you feel the pressure building? And then the release. <sighs> oh, I like it, I like it. And the curve works, the curve works. <laughs> So, the looks are better than ever, but I needed to find out whether its improvements were more than skin deep. What I want to know is, is the iPhone <laughs> a posy piece of blink or is it worth its hype? Well, it's nearly worth the hype, I think. I agree with John. It's, uh, it's almost 5G's, but unfortunately I'm going to give it 4G. OK. OK. Not 5, because the tech sensing is still quite clunky, really. Uh, the camera's as rubbish as it was in the first version of the phone, um, and the battery life does seem to be a little on the weak side with the new 3G and GPS, but... Everything else is just wonderful. Now, I want to talk to you about touchscreen phones. A couple of months ago, Apple launched this, the iPhone 3GS, an upgraded and apparently faster version of their iconic handset. But the iPhone's position in the smartphone market is under attack like never before. The iPhone interface redefines smartphones and we're all getting familiar with it, I think. You know, the double tap on a piece of text, it automatically expands to fill the screen so you can read it. You can pinch to zoom in and out. The virtual keyboard on the screen is pretty good, providing you haven't got too much text to enter. And in this 3GS for speed, you do get a bit more extra zip. Aha! New York Public Library. That sounds interesting. Let's go there. And 4G's for the iPhone 3GS. Despite a few niggles, it's a very well-designed and connected bit of kit. Welcome back. Now, I want to talk to you about the eagerly awaited iPhone 4. Apple lovers will tell you that the iPhone 4 is truly a game-changer. Apple knockers will tell you that it's another load of shiny, shiny, cleverly marketed nonsense. So, what's the truth? Should you get one, or should you avoid it like the plague? Here's the challenge. What we've got to do is use the internet on our phones to find out an unusual fact about mm -hmm. each other, and the winner is going to be the first person to post it on Twitter. You're on. Ready, mm. steady, go. Yep. We both hit the internet button on our phone's home pages, then began to search for one another. I only know you as Comedy Dave. What's your full name? Proper spelling. I couldn't tell you that, John. Dave's iPhone is the quickest to date, thanks to its speedy A4 processor, the same one used in the iPad. Plus, your visual experience is enhanced by a 960 by 640 resolution screen. It says here that you went to Oxford. In fact, you went to Oriel College. Oxford. Yes. Is that tweet worthy? Uh, well, I, I suppose so. I went to college in Warrington, which isn't really worthy of anything. Which one of these two phones do you prefer? Mm. This one, because it's yeah. smaller. You like that one because it's smaller? That one, because it's nice and flat. 
Initially, our fashion-conscious crowd plumped for the iPhone 4 on account of its lighter and thinner design. Uh, the new one, definitely. That one, the new one. But the familiar smooth ergonomics of the 3GS soon swung the votes in my favour. This feels smoother and better. I prefer the curves, to be honest. I think this is better. Oh, to touch and feel, this feels nicer. Feels like a lady. It's nice, yeah. So <laughs> that's more sensible. More like a man. <laughs> <laughs> and after 30 minutes, I'd won, claiming two thirds of all the votes. Well, I think that's a definite win for the old one, a victory for curves. And I'm surprised, John, because I thought most people would have embraced the new iPhone 4 style, but a lot of fans of the old classic shape. Let's crack on with what we're here for, gadgets, and this week, smartphones. Yes, and it won't have escaped your attention that recently Apple launched this, the 4S. Yeah. Apple lovers will love it, Apple haters will hate it, but what's interesting as it moves through its little short lifespan, will they continue to hold those positions? Will the lovers keep loving and will the haters keep hating? And will the rest of us just be left wondering, is it the best smartphone to buy? Well, we intend to answer that question this week by testing, pushing, prodding and poking the iPhone 4S to find out really if it's that good or that bad. Apple launches are rarely modest affairs, and the recent launch of the iPhone 4S was no exception. Legions of Apple fans queued at Apple stores, some of them for days, to be greeted by those familiar whoops and cheers, and to pay homage to the late, great Steve Jobs by being the first to get their hands on Apple's new wonder gadget, the iPhone 4S. In fact, with all the fuss that people have been making, you could be forgiven for thinking that this is the only gadget you'll ever need. But is it at the stage where it's made all our other gadgets redundant? Would the iPhone's HD video recorder be just as impressive when compared to a £40 Toshiba B10? I'm impressed with both of these 1080p full HD in such tiny little boxes. But when it comes to videoing, I would always go for this because it's a big clear screen and I can reverse the camera so when I'm filming myself, I can see what I'm doing. Get you with your little rucksack or oh. your big rucksack, actually. Who'd choose that? I know, but then equally I could see the argument. You made a good argument for both alternatives, the convergent device and the separates. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating area. In fact, we were debating this at the very beginning of the Gadget Show seven years ago, yeah, weren't we? Were. we? Were. Are these smartphones going to clear all these things up? And clearly the answer is yes. Next to the iPhone 5. With a four-inch widescreen display, it's a lightweight 112 grams. But the iPhone stood out for all the wrong reasons. Out of all the three cameras, all the three videos, this one has the most bland of colouring. When I look at the photographs, they just don't stand out. I don't feel like there's any real life in the pictures. The iPhone, for me, is kind of doing what the iPhone 4 did, in fact, what the iPhone 3 did. Yeah. It, it's just doing it slightly quicker. Battery's dead by 3 p.m. That means you have to carry your charger around. Unbelievable. How much of a hassle. So, time for our crucial G ratings. The iPhone 5 gets just 3Gs. No innovation. The battery life is terrible. It's too expensive and the build quality is poor. Welcome back. Now, smartphones have got to be the greatest form of communication ever. Sorry, Rex, just got a call coming in. All right. We wanted to know what the ultimate smartphone is, so yeah. we sent John out with three of the latest contenders right. for a spot of serious testing. Thank you. Bye. I was armed with three of the most powerful smartphones on the market right now. The iPhone 5S, the Nokia Lumia 1020 and the LG G2. And to test the phones, I'm enlisting the help of a London cab driver. Hopefully, some of the customers. Taxi! Andy had his paws on Apple's latest iPhone, the iPhone 5S. It's the first smartphone with a 64-bit processor and comes with a fingerprint identity sensor and a larger capacity battery. You don't need on this one to pop in the passcode because you can use your fingerprint, but you've got to register it first. OK, um, what, well, with the police? With the... <laughs> no, <don't> be re... <laughs> the 5S has retained the same design and 4-inch screen of its predecessor, the iPhone 5. It's a nice phone, the overall sort of uh, cosmetics. You know, it's nice. I use a camera quite a lot for, like, oh, family it's... snaps yeah. and, uh, like, the odd video of the kids being silly and... Well, there's Things a few like new that. features with this camera. Hey, it's got a slightly bigger sensor, slightly wider aperture, so it's a bit better performance. So that's, that's, I'm quite impressed with that because the, the iPhones have tended to have like, a bit of a rubbish uh, camera. Right. Right. Um, so that does look a, a lot better. You've got a very healthy, rosy glow on your cheeks. That's because I work out. <laughs> <laughs> 
and it's 4G's for the iPhone 5S. It's a slick performer with a groundbreaking processor and a great camera, but it is expensive and it feels a bit on the small side these days. Hello, thank you for taking part in our which is the best smartphone debate. The case for the iPhone 6 would be presented by Evan Kiprios, editor of the Trusted Reviews website. By the end of today, I'll have proved to you that it is the phone to get. As you can see, it is razor thin. What they've also done is they managed to curve the glass around the metal. So even though it's got a 4.7 inch screen, which is a lot bigger than what it had in the past, it's still really easy to use one handed. You can't do that with some of the bigger and fatter phones out there like the HTC One M8. It is chunkier than the iPhone 6 and it's heavier, okay? But I can't tell you how much I love the way that this looks. It just sticks in your hands and it just feels right. It feels like quality, okay? Quality that costs you a lot less than the equivalent iPhone 6. So very different interpretations of beauty. The next subject was one that's been an Achilles heel for the iPhone, battery life. And when we played continuous full HD video on both phones, the HTC did in fact last around three hours longer. You better concede this one, otherwise there's going to be a smackdown. I, I agree that the HC One M8 has a better battery. It lasts longer. The M8 has something called extreme power saving, which is really cool. With extreme power saving on, you can receive texts, emails, and calls. Okay, uh, and you'll you'll get uh, 14 days use out of the phone, off one charge. And for that reason, the HTC One M8 easily wins the battle of the batteries. So, Evan, a short summary of why you think the iPhone 6 is the best. It's designed better, it's got a much better camera. We haven't even talked about Touch ID, which is the great little feature that unlocks your phone and keeps it super secure. Its performance is fantastic. And, yep, it might not have quite the battery life, or it might cost a little bit more, but what you're getting is the best phone. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's no question about it. The iPhone 6 is a cool bit of kit. I've not necessarily uh, managed to convince you in all these cases, uh, but I'm hoping that I've at least managed to affect the balance a little bit with the HTC One M8. Well, let's see what the overall result is. Our final vote revealed a slight drop in support for both of the phones due to a marked increase in the number of undecided voters, which means that the battle for supremacy is closer than ever. But unless all the floating voters finally plump for the HTC, you have to conclude that for now at least, the iPhone 6 remains king of smartphones. Do we really need the iPhone 6S? Yes, there's a new version of Apple's fastest selling iPhone ever, a device that saw them make record profits. Not only does that mean some slick new videos about snazzy new features from Apple, it means there's nearly a hundred million people wondering whether to upgrade from the iPhone 6. So today I'm going to settle the matter by pitting the new 6S against the 6 in a series of rigorously scientific tests. Next, my favourite, the camera. The S has more megapixels on the front and the rear. To test them scientifically, I took a low-light shot, a picture of a colourful archway, a selfie and a high-contrast snap of a canal bridge. And then I carefully analysed the differences. And the low-light shots... Well, this is the 6, slightly yellowy. Um, the 6S, a more natural look, a better colour balance, I think. So I think it has the edge there in low-light. There was nothing between them in the high-contrast shot, and while the 6S selfie was brighter thanks to its screen-based flash, it wasn't any sharper. I've come to the city centre here in Birmingham, and my aim is a simple one, to find out whether people in Birmingham can tell the new phone from the old one, because whatever the science says, if they can't tell them apart, maybe there isn't any point in upgrading. Sir, we're testing iPhones. So one's a 6 and one's a 6S, yeah? Can you tell much difference between them? OK, no smile. First, I wanted to see if the people of Brum could tell the difference between each phone's camera. Let's go. I asked them to take a photo on each device and didn't tell them which was which. Some preferred the photos of the standard 6. That one. That one looks that sharper. One, yeah, I think that one looks better. Better quality. While others couldn't tell them apart. Yeah. Can you tell any difference between the phones? No. No. No, I can't. But a narrow majority did think the 6S took better pictures. 
the picture quality on this one is brighter than this one. It definitely looks sharp, I think. Right? Yeah, this yeah. one. Down the back. Go for that one. That was a nicer photo of you. <laughs> <laughs> My day's investigation was over. The 6S certainly doesn't trounce the 6, but thanks to new features like 3D touch and marginal improvements to its performance, it is a better phone. Although you won't always notice the difference. So, to answer my original question, is there any point in the iPhone 6S? The answer's yes. Finally, the iPhones. They're identical in size and resolution, but the new phone screen is brighter and shows a wider range of colours. The uh, clarity of it is very much, much clearer on this one compared to it's the exactly. iPhone 6. And overall, people did notice an improvement. I can see the value already because I have a 6 and there's a big difference from the 6 to the 7 plus. Mm. But I can see why people would be in two minds about upgrading from that one to that one, because mm. at best, because they seem quite similar. After my day's testing, it was clear that all the phones were better than their predecessors, especially in terms of battery life. But the iPhone 7 Plus's camera was the only major development. So, should you upgrade your phone? Well, yes, if you can afford the extra expense, why not? But don't necessarily expect to be wowed by the performance of your new model. And if there was any doubt about the enduring popularity of the iPhone, take a look at this footage. These are the crowds gathered around the world. We've got uh, Hong Kong, Dubai and Birmingham. Here we go. How much? 999 for the 64 gig. And if you want the 256 gig, that's going to set you back £1,149. Well, like most Apple products, part of the beauty is the packaging, so... Let's get going. It certainly is. I mean, for starters, just feel that. It's not just an image. No, it's embossed. Here you go, it's embossed. Hey. Okay, so don't throw away the box. Look it's worth it. something. So here we go. Oh. Look at that. Look. Yeah. Even the way you take the cellophane off, man. <laughs> it's all really nice. Okay, that was so smooth, that, wasn't that it? That comes out. Look, everything just beautifully smooth. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know it's designed by Apple in California. Wow, <gasps> look at that. <laughs> What there colours do they come in, by okay, the way? OK, they come in uh, space grey or silver. OK, look at that full-size screen. Look at that. Oh. So, edge-to-edge -edge screen, yeah. all glass composition. Mm -hmm. There, very nice. Wireless charging. Some OK, all right, yeah, take, take the... Ooh. Uh -oh. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, look! Ooh, right over the top! <laughs> so, perhaps the most talked about feature is Face ID. There's no home button mm. on here, you see, so you unlock it either by swiping up and putting in a number and or using your face. And you turn it on with your face. Now, is this, what about if it's dark? Um, so it uses infrared, ah, okay? okay. 30,000 infrared dots placed all over your face mm. so that it can build up your unique contours and face profiles. Okay, but what if I took a photograph of my face and used the camera on a photograph of my face, would that work? Okay, so again, because of the unique way those 30,000 dots sit across your face, mm -hmm. um, using a true depth camera, mm. um, you won't be able to fool it using a flat image. Okay. So, let's set it up, shall we? What we're going to do is we're going to register your face. OK. OK, and then we're going to test it. All right. And see if it works. There you go. Move your head around. That's it. That's it. <laughs> face ID is now set up. Well, there you go. Done. Done. OK, so you're in. It won't work for me. Okay. Only you can unlock it. All right, then. There you go. The phone's locked. And it's unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brilliant. <laughs> what do you guys think? Mm, well, I, 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 I feel it feels very good quality, and I think if the cameras are really brilliant, I'll probably find it quite tempting. Yeah. I'm I mean, on it. Under the yeah. triumph. Uh, the price doesn't put you off? No, it doesn't. I would pay. Mm. I would pay. So there you go, then. The iPhone 10 sounds like another winner. Welcome back. This is The Gadget Show, and now it's time for a bout of unboxing as we find out what's in the box in the very capable hands of Miss Georgie Barrett. Now, Miss Barrett, what is in said capable hands? i tell you what's in them. It's the brand new iPhone. The biggest, most powerful and also most expensive iPhone to date. I mean, the iPhone 10 was a grand. This can't be much more, can it, surely? 
Uh, yes, it can be. So this is the <laughs> iPhone XS Max. So for the 64 gig, you're looking about £100 more expensive. If you went for the 512 gig, that would set you back £1,450. For a phone! I know, it is a lot, but it's also a beauty. It's the biggest screen to date, so you've got a 6.5-inch screen there. This comes in the beautiful gold colour, which I really like. I think that's lovely. Ooh. The colour is nice. Yeah, and um, so you've got dual SIM as well, which allows oh, you yes. to have yeah, which allows you to have both your work number and your home number, or two numbers in one case. Okay, let's get it on, shall we? Let's get it on. <laughs> I just wouldn't want to spend that much money on a phone. What about you guys? We're all keeping our phones longer these days. Apple are very good at supporting their old phones, but they almost want to extract more money from us every time we buy one. Will they get away with it? Oh, I'm not sure. And for me, there are um, new phones that can do just as well um, and coming in a lot cheaper as well, some for under £400. Um, it's just not worth it for me. Well, I'm quite liking Memoji. And for the most expensive model, you do get half a terabyte of storage. Well, fair enough. <laughs>